Thank you, thank you, it's all over. It's the last show in the series with the scores dramatically poised at Gary 3, David 4. Although we should point out that David hasn't actually won any of those shows, it's just that Gary keeps getting caught cheating and disqualified. <laughs> In fact, Gary and Rory haven't got a single question wrong all series, so who knows what's going to happen tonight, apart from them, obviously. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a Leicester and England rugby back whose wife is about to have a baby. He says he's looking forward to clearing up sick and wiping smelly bottoms, and then getting home from the club dinner and helping with the baby. <laughs> Austin Healy! is Jonathan's older brother Paul. In fact, we've had a special request from their mum who's asked if we can keep them both till Boxing Day. <laughs> Paul Ross. <laughs> we kick off with the excuses round. Gary, Rory and Paul, your question involves Austin here. We'll diplomatically skip over England's defeat against Ireland on the weekend and concentrate instead on the Lions' defeat against Australia this summer. <laughs> To Andrew Walker, to Joe Rolfe, to Daniel Herbert. It's a beautiful work score. And in the end, it's Australia. Now, Lions coach Graham Henry claimed there was one reason, and one reason only, why they lost. So why was that, Gary's team? Was it the time difference? <laughs> was it the time difference? Yeah, they scored every three minutes, we scored every 15. <laughs> Had they, um, had they done extra exercise, the Australians? Had they muscled up by throwing asylum seekers into the sea? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a rugby player, Austin? Um, you're not from set at his performance, he's not. Well, it's too small to be a rugby player. <laughs> you're a tiny little fella, you're no bigger than my thumb. You can't be a rugby player. What position do you play? Mascot. <laughs> I want my money back. But you're a scouser, well, you're a sort of plastic scouser, aren't you, from Cheshire? Plucky scouser, yeah. Plucky scouser, football, yeah. football at heart. Yeah. No, Everton, Everton. Fact, yeah, so. Everton, great football team, in actual fact. They were, weren't they, yeah? They were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange to have a scouser playing rugby, though, isn't it? Do you, um, do you avoid the line-outs in case someone says, That's the man, officer, there he is! <laughs> No, your nickname was the Leicester Lip, is that right? Yeah, or Mr. Gobby or Gobshite. Because you're yeah. the one who talks a lot on your team. Yeah. That yeah. must be terrible, the one who talks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> can I just say what a great thrill it is to have Paul on our side? Because we can get dish the dirt on your brother now, can't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a bunk bed together. Paul was on the bottom bunk, I was on the top bunk. And he wet the bed until he was 11! Yeah. <laughs> Golden showers for you, eh? <laughs> Which is why there's still quite a strange smell from over there. It's sort of like a burnt honey. But, um, so both teams have got someone who smells of piss, eh, David? <laughs> I speak as I find. I was, in, I was in the top bunk, and I thought it was a great place to hide my, shall we call them, adult magazines, uh, under the mattress. But, of course, he was lying there getting a free show every night. <laughs> Just as well you're the older brother, isn't it? You wouldn't want his hand-me-downs, would you? <laughs> Now, it, it, of course, the likes of Austin, was it, and, and Matt Dawson was the other one, because they had a pop at the coach and stuff, and it didn't it rile everybody. In the the Australians. Sure, so I've had it. Well, I'll put the Australians and yeah, I'll give you three everything points else. That, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I think I read about this. You called the Australians, what did you call them? Plods and planks, didn't you? Not all of them, just one of them. OK, well, I just want to point out that we don't want any of that kind of language from you on this show. <laughs> You can use proper f swear words like twang. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. But if that, if that got the Australians going, what the f did you say the Irish? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to, he just yeah. dropped the ball. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I speak as I find. <laughs> the day before the final test, Austin's tour diary in The Guardian described Aussie player Justin Harrison as a plod, an ape, and a plank. Their feud dates back to Austin's last minute winning try against the ACT Brumbies. Here it is. When Justin Harrison walked up to Healy afterwards for a bit of argy bargy. <laughs> 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 
Graham Henry decided that Healy's article inspired Harrison and the rest of the Australian team to victory. The irony was that Austin never even saw the article, let alone read it before the match, since it was the work of his ghostwriter, Eddie Butler. I don't want to worry you, Austin, but your article in tomorrow's Guardian, titled My Palace Sama, could be the final straw. <laughs> <laughs> a plod, a plank and an ape. Now, what does that remind me of? Jonathan and Austin, it's former Celtic and West Ham yes. striker Frank McAvenny for you. Here he is scoring one against Manchester United. Oh, a lovely turn by Cotty. Yes, McAvenny! Now, McAvenny recently took time out from marrying Page Three Girls to hide £100,000 in a large cake, which he asked a convicted drug dealer to drive to Amsterdam for him. Customs officials stopped him and confiscated the money, saying it would be used to buy drugs. But Frank claimed it was for something entirely different. So why did he really hide all that cash in a cake? David's team. Was he caught because it said on it, happy first drug dealing trip? <laughs> <laughs> so, £100,000. Yep. Being driven by a convicted drug dealer mm -hmm. to Amsterdam. Yep. It's not a particularly hard case for Taggart, is it, that one? Especially with him being dead in everything. <laughs> A fictional character. <laughs> One hundred thousand pounds in a cake. Now that is what I call a promotional offer. You can stuff that twenty quid walkers off in right up your. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred thousand pounds. He's probably Great. just the world's worst coke dealer, because he's a footballer, he probably can't spell, so he went to buy some coke and he got a cake by mistake. <laughs> Did he also have in the car an eighth of mash, a heron, and a bag full of F's. <laughs> <laughs> it was a spelling blunder. <laughs> Did he give his name to the Dutch police as Mr. Kipling? <laughs> well, it's oh, it's right. Right, isn't it? yeah. Can I say that's an exceedingly bad joke? Do you know the answer, Capitan? No. Could you have found a dollar shirt to wear tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Now, McAvenny actually claimed in court that the money was going to be used to salvage sunken treasure from a shipwreck, which is officially the worst excuse since Ali McCoist said he'd been out all night having a wild time with Alan Shearer. <laughs> Frank's now become a Sky Sports pundit and was stopped again at Heathrow while returning from a European game. It wasn't drugs this time, it was that Richard Keyes hadn't served his time in quarantine. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have no points and Gary's team have three. Oh, We move on to Sporting Bluff, Gary's team. Here's a trio of sporting heroes doing what they do best. Oh, well done. George Best. Can he do it? He surely must. Double top. So that was Tiger Woods winning last year's Open, George Best scoring against Chelsea, and Stokes Phil Taylor winning one of his nine World Darts titles. So what about them, David's team? Well, it's, there is a religious cult which regards Tiger Woods as a god. Alternatively, there is a religious cult which regards George Best as a god. Or could it be that there is a religious cult which regards Stokes Phil Taylor as a god? How can you have Tiger Woods and George Best and then some dumpy bloke from Stoke? <laughs> <laughs> Golf and religion in the same question. Can life get any more boring? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, nothing like golf. Who are you playing with at the weekend, if you forgive the expression? Not Hugh Grant, yes. Any black hookers? <laughs> <laughs> it was golf, not rugby. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, you're religious. No, no, no you're not you just you're religious, aren't you? No. You're B of E, Bank of England. <laughs> And on the third day, his savings yeah. rose again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Corpus Crispy. <laughs> Which is Latin for body of money. <laughs> hey, you big gay bear. <laughs> I love it. Oh. I love it. Pearls. And what was the last one? That and now we've got to look towards Stoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Phil Stoke. Taylor. Right. Phil yeah. Taylor. No, it could be Stoke. No white men or virgins. And in fact... <laughs> Gary, give us, give us the, what do you think it is? 
I think it's Tiger Woods. OK, so you think that Austin was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes, Austin was in the right. The first church of Tiger Woods was founded by John Ziegler in Nashville, Tennessee. Soon afterwards, he also founded the fourth after a playoff church of Colin Montgomery. <laughs> He's like Buddha, only with bigger tits. <laughs> Tiger Woods famously refused an invitation to play golf with President Clinton. Mind you, Clinton did phone up and say, I've got my wood out, do you want to play a round? <laughs> David Steam, have a listen to these much-loved voices. What a shot for the hat-trick here! Oh, this is getting better and better and better! Good evening. Tonight we'll show you all the important action and reaction from the game that almost transcends Euro 96 itself. Tennis, it's time for you to go. Or as you might say, with five votes, you think it's all over. Tennis, it is now. So, what can you tell us about them, Gary's team? Scientists have discovered that John Moxon has the perfect voice for broadcasting about football. Scientists have discovered that I have the perfect voice for broadcasting about football. It's definitely not that. No, no chance. Scientists have discovered that Anne Robertson has the perfect voice for broadcasting about football. So has Motti, Jug Ears or Anne Robinson <laughs> got the perfect voice for football, David's team. The sports commentary, some of it's dead easy, isn't it? Like Davy's job on Sky. Dull. Just got to look up every ten minutes and go, yep, still dull. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've learnt a lot about David in the half an hour before the show. On a match day, what's the earliest you've ever had a booze? On your way maybe to the Nets for a bit of practice before the 11 o'clock yeah, match 9 start? 9.30. No, and what were you drinking? Scotch. Come on, 9.30 in the morning! <laughs> Didn't afford champagne in those days. <laughs> Didn't last long, though. <laughs> Bad luck, poor people! <laughs> <laughs> so should we turn our attention to Gary? I think it's amazing that working at the BBC all these years and yet advertising sky dishes. <laughs> On the side of his head. Yeah. <laughs> you have to explain a joke, it's never a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob Monkhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair here, Gary has a fantastic commentator's voice <laughs> for funerals. <laughs> I believe the Queen Mother has put on a request that you, that you do it when, when she sadly passes. When she, passes. <laughs> when she goes, she said, would it be possible for one to have the jug-eared <laughs> doing that? <laughs> Joking aside, Gary is the consummate uh, commentator professional. You know, he never once breaks his stride when he's talking. Not even when Mark Lawrence and leans over and says, I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, what do you think? Mossy. Okay, so you think that Paul was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes, Paul was correct. Speech therapist Jane Cummins used voice profile analysis to prove that Motti had a perfect pitch, volume and rhythm for football commentary. According to researchers, and this is absolutely true, the formula for the perfect match commentary is this. <laughs> that and the scoreline Manchester United nil, Doncaster 5. <laughs> The main commentator on ITV's The Premiership, Clive Tilsley, came last in the survey. It's not that he's a bad commentator, it's just that the scientists couldn't actually find a whole sentence of his that wasn't interrupted by adverts. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. What's going on is what's happening now, David's team. Take a look at this. It's not like that today, because uh, Jonah Lomu is the fastest man in team sport, and uh, he wouldn't do anything like that. No, he's actually the second fastest man. The fastest man's Will Carling, jumping into a wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realised who Austin looks like. Austin, you look like the bloke out of which one? It's either Robson or Jerome Green or the other one. 
do people come up to you and say, Robson, 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 sign my book. Robson, 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 what did your own really like? Robson, Robson, no. Robson. You know there's some twat of a rugby player who looks a bit like you. <laughs> The last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the hacker, isn't it? You think? It's Thank God for that. Well, it's a hacker, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Well yeah. done. That was the New Zealand All Blacks fearsome version of the hacker from the days before colour film, bull workers, and rugby players over nine stone. The Hacker is a deeply spiritual battle chant that goes back centuries into Polynesian culture. Or it's a load of mincing tosh performed by sheep shagging Nancys, <laughs> according to Austin here. <laughs> in his column. <laughs> Gary's team, your clip comes from the final of the 4 by 200 metres freestyle at the recent World Swimming Championships in Japan. We're in the final five. Australia take gold, America take silver, and Great Britain get the bronze medal. And Great Britain are the world champions. So how come the British team finished third but won the gold medal, Gary's team? The Australians were disqualified, weren't they, because they had vaginal propellers. <laughs> <laughs> and I think... I think I've seen all of Jonathan's videos. <laughs> I didn't think I'd missed that many days at school, but the stuff going on there, I have not clue what's going on. Are they all wearing flippers? <laughs> Wearing flippers. <laughs> <laughs> Have they got a pedalo? <laughs> I think I saw that one. Were they riding on one of those big inflatable bananas? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they in the pool before the end of the race or something like that? Yes. Well, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> hey, <Paul>. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, the second placed Americans were disqualified for a faulty changeover, and then the Australians were thrown out for this. Great final swim by Karen Pickering, and there's another medal in the bag. And look at the Australians there jumping in to celebrate. And I'm surprised there, James, because we saw Italy only just finishing the race. Now, you can't do that. There was a nail-biting three-day wait before the British team finally got their gold medals. A day to make the decision, and then two days to locate a Union Jack and a copy of God Save the King. <laughs> The World Swimming Championships were rocked by controversy when the Chinese women's team were accused of taking testosterone. Officials first became suspicious when one of them snagged her cock on the shallow end. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. Oh, Time for our regulars to feel the sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're up first this week. If you'd like to take your positions, put your blindfolds on. You're going to have 90 seconds to work out who you're feeling. You can tell it's the end of the series when Gary doesn't even iron his jeans. Look at those. <laughs> Straight, he does have a personal iron, Mark Lawrenson. Okay. First, Lineker actually runs five yards to kick the ball. <laughs> okay, can we have our first mystery guest, please? Is it Christmas? <laughs> Is it good? I tell you, I've had this dream so many times. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Oh my god. Okay, and your time starts now. <laughs> Find something down here. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. yeah. Which oh, hey, left bit, left bit Jonathan! Jonathan, you, your forward. anthrax parcels arrived, Jonathan. <laughs> You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's certain people. Oh. It's definitely oh, not sad. Richard Keyes. Get away, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want all the children to leave the room now. <laughs> this is absolutely fun. I wish I had a mobile like this one above my cot. <laughs> hmm. that like. My Tinkerbell, how you've grown. <laughs> Yes, calm down, Rory. I saw you. <laughs> I can't see a thing. 
<laughs> no, I know why. <laughs> Stop it, Rory! Uh, is this a um, uh, sandpit? Is that a clue? No? Yes, is that a, a long jumper? A long jumper or something? No, no. Triple, triple jumper. Jump. Yes. It's not, um... Alan Hansen's sister. Yes, go on. Asha! Asha, Asha Hansen! Ah. Thank you, Asha. I'm afraid Rory's just breached the terms of his parole as well. <laughs> Okay, Jonathan and David, if you can take your positions as well. well we've got one of those. Blimey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dangerous. Okay, blindfolds on. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? I'm anxious to get to the lady on the string. <laughs> like a beautiful sexual yo-yo, wouldn't she? <laughs> and your time starts now. Ooh. You know oh. that sound, don't you? <laughs> Jonathan, what are you doing, son? <laughs> <laughs> oh. what? What's that? <laughs> just, you dirty it's, big guy! It's quite a mess. <laughs> Come on, let's have a little wipe. Let's have a wipe. Yeah. David, come Stay off, Stay off, Jonathan! Stay off! Is it Roy Hattersley? <laughs> Okay, it's a surfer, is it? Yeah, what no, level? Um, well, it's about here, I think. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it the uh, silver surfer? <laughs> <laughs> is it the world champion surfer, man? No. So, the second league surfing. <laughs> silver medal in the... Oh! European surf champion! <laughs> Russell Winter! Russell, I love you. Hey. Russell Winter! Hey. European surf champion. The scores at the end of that round are David's team with six points and Gary's team with 12. <laughs> we complete the series by playing the name game and this week we'd like Jonathan and Rory to mime all their clues. The leaders goes first, mime? which is Gary's... Mime? Yeah, as in charades. 90 seconds, as many as you can. Miming only. Your time starts now. Um. Drinking, to doubts, sniff, uh, Hurricane Higgins. No, it's Paul uh, Merson, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, tennis. Tim Henman. Oh. Anna, Anna Kornikova. <laughs> Alex Ferguson. Ferguson. Alex Ferguson. <laughs> 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 Pugilist, boxing. It's a bite. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Gaza. The American girl. Yeah. They, um, oh, the. Um, oh, the name. Brandy Chastain. Well done. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I. Why is he the old girl? Uh, ballet dancer. <laughs> Uh, uh, triple jump, surfing. Oh, um, oh, 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 Stop rhyming, saying ooh la la. <laughs> ooh la la, kicking the ball. Please, you la. Okay. <laughs> Bruno. <Yeah. laughs> Frank. <laughs> Gary Lineker. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> um, on fire. <laughs> David Gower. <laughs> no, Dwight, Dwight you get off me. <laughs> You've said that before, haven't you? <laughs> George Best. <laughs> yeah, really. Ah, sure. Here we go. Yeah. 
I want to see what sport's this though. Can I give us a What do you mean what sport it is? Well, it looks like. <laughs> but you wouldn't f know, would you? That's the problem. Fancy <laughs> Fighter <laughs> is. Yes, thank you. That's never cricket. That's correct, Poster. That's not cricket. That's what you were doing wrong. Trap, Poster. Look at that. Like an ironing ball. Stick your ass in. No, Gary's team have won, which means the final series score is four shows Also, It's tie-break time. I think what we're going to do is, because we've got the surfboard here, <laughs> we should get the brothers Jonathan and Paul to be timed on the surfboard, OK? Now, we want, we want you to be dressed appropriately, so we'll give you a little bit of time to, to slip into something that, that, that's right for the... Uh... <laughs> well, I have actually hurt my <laughs> Paul, you're going to be going first. So Paul is going to go first. Okay. Ah. Good luck, Paul. Good luck, sir. Save it, save it, save it. One. Are you ready? Yeah. Your time starts now. Come on, give me more, big fella. You know what, I really am quite happy to let him have it. No, no, no. Scrabble letters. Blimey, it's quite difficult, isn't it? Imagine doing this on water. <laughs> let me just limbo up. Could you bring that lady out on the stream for an incentive? The time starts now. Come on. Oh, this is... Hey! You behave yourself, you... Whoa! I like the... Oh! I'm afraid that was only nine seconds, so the uh, series winners uh, is Gary's team. <laughs> so our uh, thanks to David, Jonathan and Austin, Gary, Rory and Paul. We're all off to plead with Mrs Ross not to have any more children. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Star of BBC One's new drama, Linda Green, Lisa Tauber, knows her Room 101 on BBC Two in a moment. And don't forget, next Friday, Gimme Gimme Gimme's back here on BBC One.